is eating and you're not. <laughs> Aren't you? I would. I'd be like, I'm always hungry. Okay. And that's it. Welcome uh, my friend Josh. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Josh, and I'm in recovery from sexual addiction, and I'm an adult child of dysfunctional families. How are you doing? I'm going to paint the room around here. So, uh, oh, grateful to be here, grateful to be with you tonight. Uh, if this is your very first time, you've come at the perfect time as we're starting at step one on denial. So, so glad you are here. And uh, I'm getting all those faces. What do you got for me? I, I, I see it all over your faces of, 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 you know, they dragged me here. So I don't really want to be here. They dragged me here. So uh, I don't care what the reason is. This applies to every single one of us in here. Oh, landing. You are free to go because we give you issues too. So junior high, high school. You are free to go to the landing. Thank you. Are we good? Yeah. Awesome. Um, so who's the camera guy today? I'm going to have him moving. There you go. <laughs> so your recovery journey begins today in step number one on denial. And my hope and my goal is wherever you are at, you see that there's a, there's a place in your life, a dysfunctional pattern, a behavior that can apply in this area. And my hope and my goal is that if you've heard the denial lesson like seven or eight times, I've been around this place, I've heard denial, I've heard about the mask, I've heard about all those different things, my hope and my goal for you is that you can admit that possibility of denial creeping back in once again. Because it doesn't go away. We, we, we trick ourselves in so many different ways. And, and I always say this to my students as well. Who's the biggest deceiver in your life? You. I'm not in, in denial. I'm good. I got nothing to work on. They do because they drink and they do drugs and I can see it and everyone else can see it. But I've got nothing to do. In fact, if they were fixed, my life would be better. It's easy to see those areas. Much deeper to, to see some of those areas that possibly we too are in denial of. And so I hope today we'll begin to maybe see some of those things. And I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit will reveal those things within all of us today including myself. In fact, my, my sponsor, I, 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 I let him know I was teaching today, and he, he goes, you are perfect for the job because you know all about denial. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I'm a blamer, I'm a deceiver, I'm all those things, and if it's in the moment, I... It, so I, I'm, I'm no one special here. Uh, at all. It is strictly, I'm in the same boat as you trying to beat this thing called denial. And so I hope uh, that you walk that journey with me as well. And so one of the very first principles here is this aspect of realize I'm not God. It sounds simple, doesn't it? it sounds super easy. Yeah, I'm not God. But in every area of our life, we play God. You can't tell me what to do. No, you're the problem, right? So easy to understand concepts intellectually, very difficult on the follow through. And so today's lesson, if you go back one more time, it's, a, it's an opportunity to hook me up on the slide one more time. There you go. Uh, an opportunity tonight to recognize it or paint over it. Now I'll explain here in just a second. In my house, I noticed one day that there was a little black mark in the bathroom. And for me, naive, I didn't know what it was. Where'd that come from? Is that a spider web? No, it's not. That little black mark began to grow. 
and it got bigger. And I, I still don't know what this is. For those of you that work on houses, my brother Nick, what is it? Yeah, there you go. Uh, it is mold growing. And if you have mold inside of a house, what must you do? <laughs> Don't put your finger in it. If it's really bad, we got we to gotta get it out of there. We got to get out all that sheet rock. We got to tear it all down, and we got to put new sheet rock in there. And that's what we're doing here. We're, 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 we're getting out that denial, seeing it for what it is, and no longer denying it, right? We're recognizing it, that it's mold. So we can paint over it, and the mold's still there. Yeah, the house individuals are like, don't do that. That, that. That's like, yeah, you're cringing, aren't you, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Painting over mold would not be the good idea, but we can tend to do that with our lives, and so let's be careful with that. Um, you know, oftentimes when we come into recovery, we, we expect change, we want change. Change me, change me, change me. Change my spouse, change my spouse, change my spouse. Whatever the reason is, we want change. Unfortunately, you, this is... The right time, the good time, because change usually happens when crisis hits. So you have an opportunity. A lot of, hey, why did we come in here? We did not come in here on a winning streak usually, right? And so because we didn't come on a winning streak, hopefully we're inviting some change here, right? And so... Hopefully we can take a little bit of that step. So my goal once again today is that we can all find ourselves in some area of denial. Step number one is we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. And so um, uh, I believe we have a powerless lesson coming up in the future. And so the realization that I am powerless over certain things, but I want to highlight some things. We're powerless over our addictions and... We never. We like to leave out and here uh, um, at times, right? Um, compulsive behaviors. Can you recognize your compulsive behaviors? I hope you can. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded like yeah. Um, and compulsive behaviors. Maybe, maybe we can't recognize it, and that's okay. That's okay. Just keep coming back, and maybe God will reveal it. Maybe a friend will reveal it. Maybe you'll be asked the tough questions, because it's interesting. If your spouse or someone that is super close to you asks you um, or says you have an issue or asks you a question that's very challenging, we quickly fight that off, but if that one person asked me that, I'm not really attached. They ask the same question, and all of a sudden, ding, I see it. Would you be wise enough to see it for yourself? And I hope you are. I hope you can see and be humble enough to see that your life and my life as well can become unmanageable. And so... I, I hope you can recognize that. Um, our scripture verse for today is Romans seven eighteen. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. It's a little bit different, sorry about that. Um, when I sent it over, I realized I sent the wrong translation. Oh well, anyway, I know it's a little bit different. But same concept, okay? That, that there's this desire aspect within me that is at war, right? That in my flesh, I have the desire to do what is right, but I cannot carry it out. Please understand who actually wrote this. And some of, a lot of us in here know that. It's Apostle Paul, who wrote half the New Testament. And yet he himself freely admits but not the ability to carry it out. He sees what he should do, what I want to do, that's my desire to do, but I cannot carry it out because there's this war raging within me. Let me extend the verse out here. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Just, just for, con maybe it's hard to read, so I'll just read it. And I know that nothing good lives 
lives in me, that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I, I am not really the one doing. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. So we often read that first part of the verse, right, in our steps. But please understand the next verse or two, right, is this reality that we've got a major mind war going on, a spiritual war going on, uh, an emotional war going on within our lives. And again, I'll remind you, who's the greatest deceiver of your life? You. You. See the mold for what it is. Don't paint over it. Don't paint over it. You and I can. I can paint over it all day. It's their problem, not mine. I don't need to deal with that. See it for what it is. See, a lot of times in denial, we have failures from the past or fears from the future. Let me read from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, Hebrews 12, 1. Two things in particular here, that God has a particular race for you and I, a unique plan. A race involves a journey. And God has a set plan for you and I, for each one of us, a good plan, not a life full of dependencies, not a life full of addictions, not a life full of obsessions, but a good plan. And I understand some of you in here might have that feeling of hopelessness in your life right now, whether it's you or that this marriage isn't going to work or... I know for me in my time, there was, a, there was a moment in my life where I thought I was gonna deal with pornography the rest of my life. You know, that was just gonna be the way it is and I just had to accept it. And so I understand that hopelessness that goes on with each one of us. It doesn't have to be that way. But give yourself some grace, little baby step at a time. Little baby step at a time doesn't have to be perfect right then and there. We need to be willing to get rid of all unnecessary baggage, past failures, or anything that keeps us stuck. And so we see here, getting rid of all the necessary weight, that, look at the mold of your life. Don't paint over it. Okay? That mold that is within you. I'm not asking you to look at your spouse's mold. I'm not asking you to look at anyone else's mold or, or your boss's mold or uh, your kid's mold. I'm not asking you to look at their stuff. I'm asking you to look at yours. See it for what it is. See that need for substance. Oh, I don't have a problem. I can, I can quit whenever I want. How many times have I said that? See that need for control. They need to do it my way. Especially as a dad myself, you know, they, they better do it my way. If they don't, I can lose my mind. And <sighs> see the mold, Josh, see the mold. Uh, the, the need for blame. That it's not my fault, it is theirs. See that need for victim mentality that, that, that I can play a victim. And within that role is a lot of denial wrestling within me. Now, I don't want to dumb this down, so to speak. I understand some of us in here have been through some really deep hurt, and I'm sorry. We're all sorry that you've had to go through some of those things. But let's see the areas of our response to those specific things that have kept us stuck, the unforgiveness, the resentment, the bitterness. The, the, every time I see that person, I can't even be okay 
that I get triggered just at the sight of that individual. See that need for revenge or resentment or bitterness, that that is mold. See that need to stew in my anxiety or depression just because these days they're talking about anxiety and depression as normal. I'm glad they're talking about it, but let's not stay there. Let's not excuse it away that somehow this can't be dealt with or talked through or any of that. Let's see that anxiety and depression, yes, there's a clinical aspect to that, but there's also just, a, I'm just depressed and I'm just kind of saturating in my own negativity, right? Okay, there's a difference there, okay? See that need for, for them to be fixed for me to start healing. If they would stop drinking, then we would be fine. See that mold that you have. Not anyone else's. That's the whole awesome thing about the steps of recovery. You are asked over and over and over and over again, look at who? You. You. Because it's the pathway to healing. What denial does, I'll blame everyone else but me. Right? See that need to hold on to stinking thinking. I don't know how many times or days or weeks or months that in my marriage I chose to give silent treatments because it was their fault. It was her fault. And I wasted that time because all I could see was she might possibly be the enemy here. It's her fault. And that stinking thinking kept me in denial, stuck, and, I'm, and I couldn't even, and I just painted all over it. I didn't even use it yet. <laughs> right? Right? Recognize it. Don't paint over it. Um, my, my son, uh, I came into his life. I'm going to start crying, but I don't care. I'm a crier. Um, I came into his life when I was eight, when he was eight. Started early. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I came into his life when he was eight, uh, when my wife and I got married. And so um, I, I never had a kid before. And I did the normal guy thing of, you know, you're man of the house, and I'm the man of the house, and what I say goes. And I created a lot of dissension within my own home. I can easily recognize and rationalize my behavior because it's his problem, not mine. Yet the way for healing lies for me recognizing I'm part of the problem. See, we have a better relationship today. Because I stopped painting over it. I saw I'm the problem. I'm controlling. I'm manipulative. I'm not trusting God that he's got my boy. There's lots of things that I can add to here. And I need to see my mold. I need to recognize it. See, the ideas of I can fix him. Just how stupid that sounds. <laughs> but I, I deceived myself. I know what's right. Do I want to fix him or do I want to let God fix him? Hmm. <laughs> Tough decision there. See, you might have some questions wrestling through your head right now. What if, what if I change? I don't know about this whole recovery thing, especially if you're new around here and you've never been here before. 
uh, what are these people? They're, they're, they're a little bit weird. They're, they're, we're at a church, and they're not usually like churchy people around this place. You know, what, what's this whole recovery thing? And so you might have a lot of questions, and I hope you're, you, you get to experience the joys of what it's like to be able to see the mold in your life and be able to not run away from it and actually look at it and take it out. But I want to preface that with we do a little bit of the work, but it's like the wall comes up for you <laughs> because it's God putting it up. So yes, there's a part that we do, but then there's a part that God puts the sheetrock up, puts up, I, for, I, I built a house too, many, too long ago. You know what it is, Nick. Uh, <laughs> And then I finally paint at the end. There you go, I skipped a lot of steps there. <laughs> you might be thinking, what if I change? What if my loved ones doesn't change? What, if, what will happen if I recognize my denial? What will happen if I don't recognize my denial? What if, what if I can't forgive a particular person? If you can or can't recognize can't recognize your shortcomings, you're in the right place. Okay? Just keep coming back. And maybe you can see a little bit of your mold. But trust me, there's a lot more mold there. There's a ton more mold. You might recognize one little thing, one little spot. But that whole wall might be full of mold. So let's keep recognizing that. Let's keep recognizing it. If you can't rec just, just know we're going to point you here at Celebrate Recovery. We're going to point you to Jesus Christ here. We're going to point you to the healer. We're going to point you to the changer. We're going to point you to the forgiver. We're going to point you to the one that has hope over our addictions and compulsive behaviors in our life. There's a part that we do. There's a part where he does most of it. You ask a lot of people around this place, what did you do? You know, to, how did you finally do it? And a lot of us in here go, I have no idea. I just kept coming back. A lot of us in here, that's our story. But no, 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 seriously, seriously. Like, what did you do? You know, what, what specific thing did you do? What formula did you do to finally get change? And all, you know, ultimately, a lot of us just go, God did it. I just kept coming back. And so, if you're new around here, just keep coming back. Keep coming back. And maybe you can see that moldy wall that is probably hiding in your life. This is a place of recovery where you're gonna deal with your past bitterness and guilt. Don't ignore the past, learn from it. See, denial can arise at, at any time, for the first timer to the recovery lifer. Man, I just look at the time, sorry. See, life, life circumstances change. Don't they? So don't kid yourself that you finally got it all together. You know, um, teenagers always do what you say, don't they? <laughs> they never rebel. They never talk back. They never think an evil thought. Oh, we know. Circumstances of life change. In our denial sometimes change too. And so we keep coming back here around this place because new issues of denial keep arising. And God, it, it, and let's not, let's not be, you know, look down on that as a bad thing. God, thanks for showing it to me because I, I didn't see it before. It was behind that painted wall. Now I see it. So uh, it's a blessing but it doesn't feel like a blessing in the moment. Denial is a false system of beliefs that are not based on reality. And so a lot of these thoughts 
are like this. My wife is my enemy. It's all their fault. I can always trust what crosses my mind. Can you trust? I can trust my feelings. If they would change, then we would be better. Denial is also a self-protecting behavior that keeps us from honestly facing the truth. I'll go ahead and go to the next one here because I want us to understand something here with denial is because at one time of, in our life, this was to our benefit. It helped us in our dysfunctional home. My anger, my isolation, my blame, my coping with substance or video games or TV or fill in the blank. See, at one time they served us well because it helped us to eliminate the problem. Now as an adult we're realizing this is no longer serving me well. Right? So at one time it worked and we wonder why we keep going to it. It's because it worked for so many years. And that's what you and I know, is to go back to some of those coping mechanisms. But they no longer serve us well. Let me share a little bit of what denial sounds like. I don't even know if I'm gonna get to the acronym here, but we'll roll with it. Um, this is what denial sounds like. Can't we stop talking about it? Talking only makes it worse. Maybe you said that, or thought it. B, if, if we don't talk about it, it's just gonna go away. Now, I don't say that to my wife, but I've sure thought it. Uh, he really doesn't drink that much. It really doesn't hurt when he does that. I'm fine. I'm good. I work with high schoolers. I see that a lot. You know, I'm good. You know, we're cool. We're good buddies. Dude, he just like totally dissed you. And you're cool? Okay. You're not cool. I know, but you don't want to admit it. Um... He, drink, he drinks more than I do. I eat because you make me mad. If you didn't nag me all the time, I wouldn't fill in the blank. Look, honey, I have a tough job. I work hard. I need a few drinks to relax. It doesn't mean I have a problem. Ouch. I'm only here for them. I'm support. God bless you all in here. And I don't mean to offend anyone in here. My wife and I have the joy of doing first time guests quite a bit. And there's many people that come through the doors. I'm here for them. I really don't have an issue. I'm, I'm good. But let's see the mold. Just a spot. And guess what? If you see one spot, you need recovery. Okay. Um, I'm not going to have time to go through all these. Um, so I'm going to run through them really fast. <laughs> this is what denial does. Denial disables your feelings. All right. I think we know this to be to be to be true. Right. That is why we, we are in denial. We don't want to deal with it. We'd rather do something else. It disables our feelings. Number two, a, E is for energy lost. That we lose some of that energy that we have and we saturate in isolation and let our thoughts run wild. N stands for negates growth we're only as sick as our secrets. And so, just like I've been encouraging you guys to do, let's see the mold. Let's not paint over it. Let's grow just one little baby step at a time. That's recovery. Being perfect, not attainable. But one step at a time, let's get out of denial so that we can Start growing. Start, stop blaming. Stop pointing the finger. And stop using one step at a time. Uh, I is for isolates us from God. Um, and 
in this area, I'm gonna be real quick on this. I wish I had a little bit more time for this. But this isolates us from God in our denial. This happened with the, the first two human beings that ever walked this planet. What is the first thing they did? Denial. She did it. Serpent did it. God, you're the one who gave me this woman. <laughs> oh, but we don't, we don't struggle with denial. You're talking about the perfect two human individuals and the, one of the first things they do is run into denial. See the mold, just a spot. And lastly, so we can get out of here, is, um, well, there's two more. It, um, alienates us from our relationships. Of course, that's what denial does. And lastly, L, lengthens our pain when we're stuck in denial. See the mold, remodel, one baby step at a time. I understand the hesitation of that. Allow God to help you begin your healing journey of freedom. Okay, allow it. See one spot, let's move one step at a time and maybe we can unpack a little bit more. Don't paint over that one little spot and go, it's them. And if you're in here and you go, I'm just here for support, maybe you too can see the need to recover in one little area. Now, if I've offended you, please, first timer, please don't run away. You're like, this guy's rude. <laughs> okay, don't run away. We love you. And guess what? All of us in here struggle with denial. Okay, so you're not alone. You're in good company here, okay? Uh, I do wanna give the topic question before we do our serenity prayer. The topic question for those of you online, uh, thank you for being with us. Our topic question is, what are you in denial of and how has denial impacted your life? That's our topic question of the day. Would you stand with me as we sing, do the serenity prayer? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, to be as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to you. Supremely happy you for our next. Two things, real quick. First timers, okay? Welcome you through those rooms right there. Say hi to Sean and Michelle. We'd love to have you. Right up here, if you're a second timer, you don't know where to go to group, Mitch and Cindy will be here. Thank you guys.